All right. Boy, I'll tell you what, before I broach any topics today, oh, let's go ahead. Yeah, I'm parked off the road good enough. And lock that bad boy up. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and do do things in order. Uh, try to follow the same routine. <clears throat> so, uh, basically, today my feet aren't hurting quite as bad. Though my left foot's giving me a little bit of problems due to some unfortunate circumstances that occurred yesterday. And that video is going up later this evening. Uh, it took about 12 hours to render that video because it's an hour and 14 minutes um, and I'm going to put my timer up <laughs> we're going to walk 15 minutes in one direction starting now what we're going to do today is basically that's not 11 hours we're gonna walk, go back to our regular routine, but I am going to walk the opposite direction when I get back to my car, pick up some of them cans I've been eyeballing. Yep, that's right. And I'm just gonna split off, not another channel, but just another section. I'm gonna call it a, a man picking up cans. Just, just simple, basic, rudimentary stuff. Uh, anyway, I'm on day number two of the uh, water flush, watershed routine. I am, uh, <laughs> I'm already ready to get off of this thing. I have not craved salt so much. <laughs> I'm not adding anything to my food. This morning I scrambled some eggs with unsalted butter and that's it. Was it as bad as the boiled chicken that I just ate and I ate for lunch yesterday? That boiled chicken, man, that, that leaves a lot to be desired. And there's going to be a lot of wind noise because the wind is blowing and it's really cold. Uh, the, uh, I'm on, I'm, I'm about three quarters of a gallon into my drinking. <coughs> so uh, I'm going to have to pick it up tomorrow because tomorrow I have to drink two gallons. So uh, yeah, I've not been peeing as much as you'd think you'd be peeing when you drink a gallon of water over a gallon. But uh, I don't know. Uh, right now my stomach hurts. My stomach didn't hurt the entire time I drank my bulletproof coffee. But it sure did hurt all night last night. I was craving sugar. I was craving salt. I was I was hangry. Uh, definitely ready to get this sucker out of the way. Get this get to Wednesday so I can eat some normal food. Something with some flavor. Uh, now, about my foot. So yesterday, I was uh, back at Burr Ferry with my my dad. I'd taken Wesley out there so my dad could watch him so I could do my walk. Remember, we're getting a 30-minute walk at the minimum every day, any means necessary. So I guess i got to drop my kids off. To be babysat so I can go get a walk, I guess I'll do that. Well, anyway, I walked on Highway 8 and I walked up to, or I walked on Highway 111, walked up to Highway 8, walked towards the Texas Bridge. Uh, it was hot, but it was raining. And it was only sprinkling, it only started raining heavy on the return back <laughs> and I was gonna say I was gonna do a one-hour walk and that's all I had plans to do a one-hour walk and uh well I tripped and kind of tweaked my ankle a little bit and I did it right when I was supposed to turn around and walk back so I was a mile and a half deep and I had to walk back with a hurt foot. Luckily, I walked it out a little bit and it stopped hurting so much. But uh, it was definitely miserable. Uh, and the ponchos that I bought from Walmart, they did very little to keep me dry. In fact, I, I think I was more wet today. Or, well, I think I was more wet from wearing it 
than if I had just gone without it. Uh, and my jacket's still wet, so I'm drying in out. I'm wearing a slightly thinner hoodie, which uh, is not doing much to keep me warm against today's temperature, which is not hot like it was yesterday. It's just windy and cold. It's about 40 degrees, but the wind is dropping that temperature something fierce. So that's definitely a little bit of misery. <sighs> Boy, that culvert's sticking out right there. That looks like somebody was riding a, a dirt bike. <sighs> oh God, the hills. Hills and cold air. I hate those two things. Ooh, that's washed out pretty bad. More of them red rocks that we have in Louisiana, right? <laughs> uh, but no, <laughs> I fell and I got up and kept on walking. I said a long string of cuss words and I actually went through the trouble of beeping out all those cuss words even though I I did drop a couple of bad words at the beginning and towards the end of the video. I can move with one or two, I suppose. But the tirade I went on after I fell, it, that, was, that was the creme de la creme of cussing. And I beeped it out. I think the beeps make it more funny. Uh, but, uh, no, I... Uh, I fell and I kept walking and of course I was, I'd cut my hand up and I scratched my knee and I tweaked my ankle and I just went on about my business well I got to wondering I said man I'm already past the Tilly's place I said I didn't think I'd make it this far is my timer ever going to go off did I set my timer so I, I went to to go for my phone and my phone was not there. Panic mode started kicking. Now, I'm not a person that's like literally going to die if I lose my phone. But I am a person who gets stressed out about being stressed out. If that makes sense. And the idea of having to replace my phone just irks my nerves to no end. I'm not interested in doing that. Well... I turned around, let loose a few choice words, began my walk back. And I walked and I was like not finding my phone and I was freaking out slightly. And uh, I got to where I thought I fell and lo and behold, <laughs> it wasn't there. I said, man, I thought I fell here. Nope didn't fall there or my phone was gone so I kept on walking I mean I didn't have a choice right I had to walk back and uh about a quarter of a mile my phone's on the ground the alarm's going off and it's face up <laughs> which at the time I thought face up would be the worst thing but I think it might have been the best thing I'm not really sure but uh, it, it got rained on pretty bad. I dried it out when I got home. But it kept wanting to go off while I was walking back. And do all this weird random stuff. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I found my phone. I dried it out. It still works. Barely. But, you know. And it's always barely worked. So it's back to... It's 100% recovered. Uh... When I finally got back, I'd clocked in about an hour and 15 minutes of walking dog. I broke the three mile marker. I haven't walked three miles in a long damn time. And I felt it. Oh, I felt it. I felt I slept so good last night. Even though I didn't fall asleep till 11 because I drank coffee to kind of help with my stomach and the hunger pains that I was having, the cravings were, they were out of this world. And I was sipping on coffee as slow as I could. And later that night, my stomach just hurt more. 
I was happy to finally fall asleep. <laughs> but yeah, it was embarrassing. I thought about scratching the video, but I said, you know what? This needs to be valid. I need, I need to put this up for you know, just for recording's sake, just just for records, to show that yesterday was a damn good day to say I'm done with this. I'm not doing this anymore. Would have been a good day to quit. Take this stick, throw it out in the woods, go back home, eat a bunch of shit I don't need to eat. I just gave up. But instead, back on Camp Baker Road, where there's not a ton of traffic like there was on Highway 8, stomping out my project. And I'm not stopping. I'm not quitting. As much as certain folks don't want me to do it, uh, or well, they fought me on it, I'm doing it. And not only am I going to walk this trek, I'm going to have videos of me picking up cans. Because I can't think of anything more boring to watch as a fat guy picking up cans. And I'm probably not going to talk much because I'm going to be listening to podcasts while I do it. Uh, just to kind of get my mind off things. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Now, I'm about to talk about the Far Cry Primal again. So, uh, I'm almost, I'm almost there. I'm working on it. I got 70 Dacia hands, almost all the cave paintings, almost all of these uh, idols that you have to place, you know, or totems. I'm almost there. I have to go capture a mammoth, charge that mammoth through the front gate of a fortress, kill Batari, and take that fort over, finish getting Deja hands, finish getting all the Winja bracelets, and uh, find a, a few monsters that I have to tame. I have to find a, a rare black lion. I've never seen one. And I have to tame a rare black jaguar, which I've seen plenty of those, and a rare black dole. Uh, I like to refer to doles. This road is so bad. I'd hate to have to pull into this road every day. Doles, I like to refer to them as dingoes or something. Uh, but yeah, I got to get those rare animals. But I actually got one of the more rare animals that I've been reading about. And I don't know what road that is. That sign's gone. <laughs> I'll find out what road that is when I get home and I, and I sit down for my satellite image. Uh... But uh, I, ca I captured a red stripe or, or, or a rare striped wolf. He looks pretty cool. He's weak as hell. I'm still using my blood fang saber tooth because he's tough. I can ride him. He's fast. Yeah, he eats me out of house and home. But uh, definitely an awesome pet. Uh, the bears kind of suck because they're slow. I can't. I, if you can ride a cave bear, I don't know. I can't make the dude right jump on his back. So I'm just going to assume that you can't ride cave bears. Uh, the rare wolf, he's the snow blood wolf. I mean, he's kind of tough, but uh, can't ride him. Hey, can't ride him. Oh well. And he dies quicker than all of the rare ones. Now I haven't, I got to get the scar blood bear, blood something, some kind of rare bear. That's my last great beast quest. And uh, I'm going to tame that bear. And if I can ride him, awesome. Bears are still slow, though. So, I don't know. I send a bear into a village to kill some guys. They always killed the damn thing. Send my saber-toothed tiger in there. He wrecks. He wrecks the shop. He takes out a significant amount of bad guys before they take him down. Uh, one thing I have neglected to talk about is you do have a reconnaissance tool. Because like in all Far Cry games, when you approach outposts and bonfires and, and just general skirmishes, you uh, you get to send a, an owl out. Now this, if I remember right, this is not in any Far Cry game. So you press the Z button, which I don't know what that is, on your Xbox or your PS4, and you uh, you whistle. You do a woo 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 woo, and uh, that was a terrible, terrible imitation. <laughs> And this owl flies out, he goes, and he flies out. And you look around and he just starts tagging everything. 
Now my owl is maxed out because I've only got like maybe three skills left and I maxed that owl skill out about the middle of my playthrough. And uh, as soon as he hits the air, he starts tagging just a ton of stuff automatically. And whew, he can drop bombs. He can drop all three of the different bomb types. He can drop the B bomb, which I love. He can drop the fire bomb, which coupled with a B bomb, the fire bomb pretty much one shots everything except like special bosses. And then you have the berserk bomb, which I don't really fully understand what's going on with that thing. I don't, I don't know what its big deal is. It doesn't seem to be a very effective bomb. Uh, but I am going to experiment with it to see if it actually affects the game in any way it helps out uh, and the bee can attack things so when you level it up not only can it attack normal level uh, enemies it can attack higher level elite enemies now still can't take out the guys with the shields the the defense guys that's interesting up that hill I don't know if it's somebody's driveway or not <sighs> Hey, we're, we're right here. So the car, I could park the car somewhere right here. Probably right there. Or right over here. All right. We're going to slap 15 back on the clock. We're going to get our 30 minute walk in. <coughs> All right. <coughs> anyway. To be able to take out the, the higher level guys, you can actually take out the alarm guys. So at a max level up, which at the end you just knock his cooldown down. You can take out all the guys who trip the alarms initially. And just like Far Cry, you can destroy the alarms from afar, which they're hard to see. They don't quite show up very well out in the world. So, uh, but if you find them, shoot them. Because you get like double the XP if you take out a base without an alarm getting triggered. Uh get over here on this left side of the road I'm trying to make this a habit even though hey not a car has come by so pretty much after Empire Point if you're coming down this way you're you're going to the woods or something you're you're just cutting through uh, but uh but no the owl is useful it's nice to be able to tag enemies like that real quick and in a hurry uh, Let's see, what else? What, what else did I not talk about? Oh, you know, I haven't really talked about, you know, they bring in takedowns, which takedowns are in every Far Cry game. You sneak up behind a target, you press the F button, bam, you, you get up behind them, you shank them right in the face, and they die. And just like every Star, every StarCraft game, <laughs> every Far Cry game, you can press another button, usually a left click for this game, and uh, you throw a a dagger, which in this case it's just a sh uh, stone shard, and a nearby enemy, and it one shots them. Just one, one hit. And if I'm not mistaken, it takes out heavy dudes too, and it gives you a ton of bonus XP. And <sighs> yeah, and you can do death from above, and you can do ledge takedowns. Now, death from above in this game, I've had a lot of good luck with death from above. I've literally run up a hill. Turned around, jumped down the hill, not a cliff, jumped down the hill, landed on top of somebody, death from above. As soon as I hit him with death from above, throw a shard as my special at another guy, and I am rolling in XP. I'm taking guys out. My, my saber tooth is taking a third guy out. By the time I get through, he's on a fourth guy. And I headshot him with my bow. It's pretty awesome. I really hope that Far Cry 5 with its omission of the mini-map <laughs> includes something similar to the owl because without a mini-map it's going to be a pain to tag those enemies uh, because you know you really need to see and I hope the tag system is a little bit more visible because you really need to see where those tags are on that mini-map so you can get an idea of which way they're facing and I think that's the big thing. See, in Assassin's Creed, you don't have to really worry about which direction something's facing unless you're doing some kind of like quest where somebody's facing you. 
Because an Assassin's Creed, you could go in, just cutting people up, and you can run away because you can jump up towers and stuff. You can't do that in Far Cry. So you got to run away the hard way in Far Cry. You got to find first. You got to sprint out, find some cover, hide, and hope they don't set it on fire. Which is one of the one of my favorite things about Far Cry is it introduced the concept of bad guys smoking you out. So you're hiding in a field, and they're like, "Oh, I got you." They start throwing out like torches and stuff to burn the field, forcing you out. And it was introduced. I want to say Far Cry Three, but they might have did. They might. They might have did it. There we go. They might have done that in Far Cry Two. Uh, but yeah, I'm hoping for that. That maybe a falcon or something like that to kind of help tag enemies. <laughs> and I also noticed <clears throat> watching a, a a pretty cool little gameplay video. Lots more enemies in this game. In Far Cry Primal. Uh, that's one of the cool things about Far Cry is they're not shy about loading a base down with baddies and they make it very fun to take bases out and I'll link the video and I want to say not yesterday's video but the one before where it showed three different ways to take a base out and they uh they were talking about uh you can do it the stealthy way you could do it uh, like a sniper, which to me is a stealthy way, but whatever. The uh, and you can go in barrels blazing, and apparently you have the ability to call in an airstrike. <laughs> so that's that should prove pretty useful. And uh, oh, and to snipe, you can call in a companion, a human companion, who is a sniper. You can put her on a roof, and she can start blasting people. So, there's that. And then, for the stealth build, you can come in with your dog. You can have a dog companion. And he'll go up and he'll snatch weapons from guys. He'll kill guys. He'll bring you the weapons back. So, huh, could be an interesting little thing. Uh, so, the Winter Olympics have kicked off. And I like the way I just went right into the Winter Olympics without even really shutting down Far Cry. <sighs> but it's, it's really what's on my mind, I suppose. Not really that it's on my mind. I'm not thinking much about the Winter Olympics. But <sighs> the first event's over snowboarding. I want to say an American won the gold medal, but I don't know. Uh, the, uh, the interesting thing was is NBC... They showed the opening ceremonies and they left out like certain countries to loop, to actually loop and replay the Americans walk out, which it really only took like, I want to say 75 seconds is, is what I think I read. And they played it for like seven minutes. I'm like, really? Y'all can't play all the, the countries? But I saw a Korean girl playing the drums. But the coolest, and she looked real like she was really enjoying it. It was just a little gif I saw on Reddit. And uh, another cool thing, which was equal parts cool and terrifying, was that they had gotten some drones, a lot of drones, and they were flying them in formations to make the shape of different athletic logos and the Olympic rings while they were flying around. And I'm like, wow, that's neat. And then I was like, what if all those drones had bombs on them? That would be terrifying. They could literally coordinate all those drones to fly at a target in a, any formation. You could come in at a global formation. So like, let's say you got a target. Let's say your target is me. Okay, so let's say we got 100 drones are coming straight for me. Now, if I may have a weapon, I may have some kind of method to stop a straight line of drones coming for me. Or they come one at a time, or ten at a time. If they're all in front of me, I may have a, a fancy shotgun that I could just fire away, kill all of them. And let's say I have 50, I have 50 drones coming, you know, toward me, coming behind me. Well, I'm in a little bit of trouble, right? 
I might get a, I might get thinning them off, you know, with a little bit of quick spin and stuff like that. And maybe I have a partner. Maybe I have three guys. We call them specialists. We can say these guys are amazing. And <clears throat> us four, we could stop those drones. Even if they come in the cardinal directions, north, south, east, west. You know, you got four guys facing those directions, shooting. Drones coming straight at you. <laughs> All right, 25 each. No thing. Now... Imagine all those drones coming at you in a circle. So you'll probably have one drone coming from each direction. And you know what? Let's just say for the sake of saying you've got four real fast, sharp shooting son of a guns and they got like they got the stuff to just take out a straight line. They go ta 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 in a circle before they even get to them. All right, and of course, you only got to do your, your quadrant if you're four people, all right? Now, if I'm starting to sound real sci-fi to you or real geeky, this is very geeky. This is, this is actually what I thought about after watching an event that's based on peace and unity. <laughs> uh, <coughs> so then I got to think, and I'm like, okay, so you... But then you got to think, 3D. 100 drones with bombs... And a, let's say their payload is like a, like a regular grenade. The shrapnel and everything. Uh, but it uses an explosive and a system that's uh, very light. You don't have to worry about the weight. So the drones, they can be not so big. <laughs> they can be small. But imagine you had one drone coming at you from each direction. But not only are they coming straight out, they're coming all around in an encompassing globe <sighs> unless you're some kind of a superhero some kind of a non-human there ain't nothing you can do about that <sighs> there's nothing you can do about that you did don't matter how good you are now i'm sure we could devise if these ever became an issue we could devise some kind of an emp system where you had this EMP going off constantly, but that means any electronics communication, any kind of electronics used to help you out on the field, any kind of electronics to help you deal with tactics, those are now bunk, unless they're in some kind of a Faraday cage, but then you still can't use them because they have to be completely separate, separate from the outside world. I guess if you can sense the, uh, the drone's coming, you could you could throw everything in the box, then start firing the EMP off. And it's very quiet out here. <laughs> you can just start firing the EMP off and you can start dropping drones. <coughs> All right. But uh, if you don't have that and you just, you're out there and you're starting to get swarmed in a globe by drones and they're all coming, same speed, same direction. What do you do? You can't take cover. They're coming to get you. If all of them make it to you, it'll blow a hole in the ground. It doesn't matter if you go hiding that smushed up culvert right there. All they got to do is hit the ground and blow up. That many explosions, you're dead. So, uh, that's an interesting scenario with no easy solution. And it's all operated by I would fare to guess one dude with a good computer and a good sense of setting things up. That is interesting. <sighs> so yeah, instead of uh, thinking about weapons, maybe I should just focus on the fact that they're very artsy fartsy and cute and they look cool. I just can't get my mind off the fact or the idea that you can arm these things and they can just attack. Uh, maybe I'm just worried about nothing. I don't know. No. Uh, <sighs> I'm tired. I'm sweating a little bit, but I'm cold. So I'm probably, I'm probably going to be dealing with a cold after this walk. Especially since I'm only halfway done with what I plan on doing. And not even halfway done. I'm not, I'm not close to halfway yet. 
but uh, my timer's still going. I made it a, a little bit of ways. I'm gonna have fun trying to find the spot that I stopped at on, on the sad image. I'll do my best. I'm gonna guess that I probably walked about a mile and say 1.1, 1 .1, maybe 1.1 miles in that direction. <laughs> and I'm not going for distance or speed with the can picking up thing. I'm going for just picking up cans. I'm gonna walk at the pace that I'm walking now, but uh, there will be times where I stop because I gotta pick them aluminum cylinders up. Uh, I guess now that I know I'm approaching my car, I can, uh, let's see, what do I want to talk about? Well, you know what? I watched an interesting video. It found an interesting YouTube channel last night. It's called Hacksmith. And this guy, he, him and I guess his buddies, they take ideas from movies and they, uh, they basically make them real. And they, they do all this plotting and planning physics and math and all this stuff <clears throat> and they make things and the video I watched last night they have begun a project where they are trying to make a system of hovering like Iron Man does and they ordered a jet engine which I didn't even know you could do <laughs> I didn't even know you could do a jet engine or buy a jet engine but they bought a little jet engine that uh <laughs> that puts out a lot of thrust but it puts out a lot of fire so they're trying to find out a way to safely build the system without burning the dude alive that's gonna wear it and uh <laughs> i think it's pretty neat pretty neat little science channel there they're putting together this stuff to and they're funding it i guess as they go i guess as they take donations they'll work on it uh, but it's kind of like a Mythbusters type thing. Uh, so I don't know. I'm going to look more into the channel and I'm going to link it down below in today's video. Uh, actually I, this video, not today's video because today's video is from yesterday. I don't know what I'm going to do with the video description for it because that was, a, that was a miserable mess. <sighs> I feel you can see my feet go up in there and then I. I let loose a string of cuss words. Well, anyway, I don't know when I'll upload picking up cans with her, a man picking up cans. I'll probably use that as my filler videos from time to time. But uh, you can look for a man picking up cans in my channel under a certain category if I can figure that out. And you can, uh, you click that like button if you want to keep up with me in the channel you can click the subscribe button uh, i'm going to start putting some details about my weight and things like that to kind of keep track of things as i lose weight all right anyway keep on pounding people thanks for watching